strategic battles in Ukraine. Advancements in the South, yielding shelling in the East, it's the backdrop of a protracted conflict. Ukrainian troops in the Southern Front persist in their quest to broaden the territory. They've carved out advancing strategically towards the pivotal Tokmak hub. The past 48 hours have been marked by a concerted effort by Ukrainian forces to solidify their gains, having overcome the initial Russian defenses, notably around the Roboting village. Deputy Defense Minister Hanna Maliar conveyed the successful maneuvers in the regions of Novo Danilivka and Novo Prokopivka. The areas have seen marked progress, with Ukrainian forces currently establishing their hold, she highlighted. Notably, Novo uh, Prokopiv. K lies south of Robotain, positioning it close to the second line of entrenched Russian defenses. Looking at the broader picture in the regions of Zaporizhia and Kherson, the dynamics of the conflict see the Russians on a defensive stance, with the barrage of shellings remaining relentless. The intensity of these shellings has been consistent, amounting to around 4,000 to 4,500 attacks every week, emphasized Malaya. On the contrary, Russian accounts, particularly from Denis Pushlin, leader of the self-proclaimed Donetsk People's Republic, portray a different narrative. Pushlin asserted that Ukrainian advancements were being effectively thwarted. Their main objective is clear. Penetrate deeper into the primary defense line of the Russians and capitalize on the available time before harsh weather conditions set in, aiming squarely at Tokmak, Pushlin stated. Simultaneously, the eastern front of Ukraine remains a hotbed of action. According to Maliar, Russia's primary offensive strategy is concentrated in the east. Cities like Lyman, Kupiansk, Marienka, and Avdiivka have become focal points of Russian efforts. Defection drama. Ukrainian authorities release Russian defectors tell all interview. The Ukrainian defense intelligence has unveiled an explosive interview with a Russian helicopter pilot who, in a riveting twist last month, defected and commandeered his Mi-8 combat helicopter to Ukraine. The pilot, identified as Maxim Kuzminov, shed light on the meticulous planning behind his audacious escape. Detailing his first interaction with Ukrainian intelligence, Kuzminov recounted, after reaching out and explaining my predicament, they responded with an enticing proposition, a safe haven, fresh identification, and even a financial reward. Subsequent communications firmed up the details of his audacious escape. Recounting the fateful day of his defection, Kuzmanov shared during a routine flight, it dawned on me that I was skirting the border. I radioed my coordinates, signaling my proximity and readiness. With resolve, I cruise at a barely detectable altitude, keeping radio communications at bay. My unanticipated move left my compatriots in the dark. I navigated into Ukrainian airspace, landed, and was duly debriefed. Although the backdrop of the interview remains veiled in mystery, Kuzminov seemed unencumbered, passionately dispelling prevalent Russian narratives. The assertions about fascists or Nazis here are unfounded. He stated emphatically, describing... The conflict's grim reality, he lamented, what we witness now is a brutal massacre, a relentless and senseless fratricide. I couldn't partake in it any longer. He portrayed a stark contrast between the public narrative and ground realities. The ongoing conflict is nothing short of a genocide against Ukrainians. Regardless of their nationality, be it Ukrainian or Russian, Kuzminov articulated, adding that he was driven by a desire to abstain from being a party to the atrocities. He voiced his firm belief in Ukraine's eventual triumph, attributing it to the newfound unity among its people and global support anchored in the universal value of human life. Meet Rustam Yumra, the Crimean Tatar poised to helm Ukraine's defense ministry. As Ukraine grapples with intensifying war dynamics, Rustam Yumrov, a prominent Crimean Tatar, stands on the cusp of assuming the pivotal role of Ukraine's defense minister. This move comes as the nation embarks on strategic counteroffensives targeting Russian strongholds in the south and simultaneously seeks bolstered support from its allies. Marov, an illustrious Crimean Tatar, presently chairs the State Property Fund, a body aimed at enticing investments into Ukraine. 
He played a pivotal role in spearheading prisoner exchange negotiations post the Russian invasion. Furthermore, his expertise was pivotal in framing the Black Sea Grain Initiative, wherein he expressed skepticism about Russia's commitment to the agreement, distancing himself from President Volodymyr Zelensky's predominant servant of the People Party, Umarov aligns with the lesser-known Golos Party. His Muslim heritage has facilitated forging influential ties with Gulf nations.